So in the next, in this video and the next video recording, we're going to talk about memory swapping, which is beyond the physical memory. So as shown in this slide, let's assume we have a really simple um, computer system. And this computer system has a hard disk drive, which is used to store and persist the data, persist the program, right? And at the same time, it has a memory. And right now, what is shown over here, it doesn't reflect the memory, but instead it shows a virtual memory. So this is because this is the, uh, the, the concept that is directly uh, owned by the user level process, the user program, or the developers. Okay, so let's assume at some point of time, this user, he wanna run this program, which is currently stored within disk. Okay, and within the program, the file, it has the data part and the, the, the code part. So, in order to execute the program, the operating system would load or read this program files from the disk, from the hard disk drive, all the way into the memory, so that the operating system construct a virtual memory context for this uh, newly loaded program which the operating system call process one, okay? And right now on the right hand side of this slide, it shows this virtual memory address space, which is part of this process context, okay? If you zoom in into this virtual memory address space, it gets segmented, but it further gets paged. So let's forget about the paging. Let's take a look at this uh, coarse grain segments part. It has its co-segment data segment and the size uh, dynamically adjustable uh, heap segment and stack segment, okay? So, um, so here, um, so you might, you might be wondering how the operating system maintain this virtual memory context information, context state for this particular process number one. Well, so it's relatively, straightforward. Recall that we've, talk, we've been talking about paging and page tables. And this page table data structure is one of the most important uh, bookkeeping info, uh, data structure that is used to keep track of the literally basically every, each and every data uh, for this particular process currently residing either in disk or in memory. It's a significant part of this uh, the whole memory context that belongs to this running process, process number one, okay? And within this page table, it has multiple page table entries, right? And within the page table entry, it records important information. Out of those information, the most important information is the address field. And this address field, it could either be the physical frame number, which is the, the, the memory address, or it could be the, the corresponding disk address if that memory part happens not to be currently residing within the physical memory, but instead has already been swapped out to disk, okay? So if you take a look at this question, the question is what's inside of this code segment, right? So within the code segment of this, uh, a running program, it consists of many large libraries together with the program code itself, right? Some of the large memories, some of the large libraries, they are frequently being used while the rest, they are just being rarely, uh, they are rarely used or never being used, right? For example, libc is a popular library. It's likely that libc is uh, something that is frequently being used. Okay, so the question, the next question is how to avoid wasting physical memory. So first of all, the memory resource is relatively more precious as compared to disk resource because disk, while it's slow, it has way much larger capacity compared to the physical memory, right? So the question is how to avoid wasting memory space to back those rarely used a virtual pages or rarely used library data, right? 
So before answering, into, answering this question, let's first take a look at the physical memories layout. So at the bottom of the slide, it shows the, the part of the physical memory that is used to store the data for this running process number one. As you can see, the code segment, within the code segment, it only maintains libc together with program within the physical memory. Whereas lib a and lib b, they're right now not within memory, but instead still residing on disk, right? So in this case, recall that the, one of the most important facility, facilities to maintain the virtual memory state, virtual memory context information is page table. And operating system use page table to keep track where exactly the, the virtual page or the, the, the memory data is. So it could be either within the virtual uh, physical memory, just as shown for libc and the program, or it could be temporarily swapped out onto disk or has never been read out of disk because, because it's really being used, it's never being used. So the operating system would not bother reading it out from disk, okay? So at some point of time, process number one wants to get access to this libb, which is some relatively decode code library, right? Which is not currently reside within memory, okay? So the operating system would, uh, on a on-demand fashion, read this libb, okay? All the way from disk into the memory. And at the same time, operating system, what is what operating system does is operating system updates the virtual memory context information, which is the page table part. So the operating system just updates the corresponding page table entries that are associated with libb. So that it first flip all the present bit, okay? From zero to one to indicate right now, all of these data corresponding with libb are within the memory. And uh, also, operating system updates the address field to change it from the disk address to the memory address, to the physical memory, basically physical frame numbers, okay? So previously, it has a pointer that points to somewhere in the disk. So it completely changed, update this information, and establish a new link, a new pointer, Okay, that points to the physical memory. And this is how, you know, this virtual memory serves as a bridge, you know, that connects users, that connects the uh, disk space together with the physical memory, okay? So this whole copy process, the copying the library B from disk to the memory is called swapping in or paging in. This whole process is called swapping in or paging in. So the next question is, how to know exactly where a page lives? So right now we're talking about these two different places. We have disk, okay? And we have physical memory. Okay, so how to know where exactly the page lives, whether in disk or physical memory? As we've already mentioned, by just looking at the page table entry, and this is how a page table entry looks like for x86 operating system. And the lowest bit is called a P field. This P bit is the present bit, which indicates whether this page is within the memory it's present within a memory or not. If the present bit is one, it means it's currently residing in memory. Otherwise, it has been swapped out to disk or has never been read out from disk, okay? So here, it, another concept that you need to you know, get familiar with is 
the so-called paid fault. So during the address translation process, if the present bit happens to be zero, there would be a page fault because whatever data access that has to be it has to be happen within the memory. You have to read the data from memory. But before the data is present in memory, operating system needs to load it into the memory. This is called a page fault. And this whole page fault operation is completely transparent to the upper level program. The program is not aware whether its own data is within memory or out on disk. But he might be aware of this process by just sensing it. He can fuse it, right? Why? It's because page fault is slow because it incurs IO operations. So it's, it can sense that its performance gets impacted significantly uh, during the page fault operation. But this whole process logically is transparently is transparent to the upper level application. Okay. So in this slide, we have an example page table. So within this page table, it has a total number of uh, nine page table entries. Okay. So each page table entry it has four fields. And the very first column, the very first field is the corresponding physical frame number. Okay, so this is the essentially the address field. And the second field is the value bit. It indicates whether this particular virtual page is valid or not, is allocated for storing something or not. Okay, and then we have the third field. The third field is some permission field, protection field. It indicates whether it's readable, it's writable, or it's executable or something, okay? And then we have the fourth field, which is a present bit, which is the interest of what we're talking about right now, okay? So next, if you take a look at this example, um, so within this page table, it has four valid page table entries, meaning it has four valid virtual pages. Out of these four, two are residing within memory. So the very first virtual page number, the very first virtual page, and the second to the last virtual page, they are right now residing within memory. How to tell? By looking at the present bit. So present bit of one indicating they are right now residing in physical memory as shown by the uh, blue arrays over here. Okay, so the rest of these two virtual pages, virtual page number, um, so this is virtual page number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So virtual page number three has its corresponding address field as 6T. It has a present bit of zero, meaning it's something already swapped out or something that has never been read out of disk. And the same for the last virtual page which is virtual page number eight. It has its address field as 64. Obviously, this is some disk address because its present bit is zero. So as shown in this uh, red arrow over here, okay? So let's assume at some point of time, operating system, the, 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 the program wanna, wanna get access. So um, before that, if you take a look at this uh, protection field, it has different protection permissions. So the very first virtual page is, is some uh, code segment because it has this third field, which is X, right? X means executable, just like the file permission. We guess that this is a, it corresponded with the code segment. So the rest of the, uh, the virtual pages, it has read and write, right? Read and write. So these, it means that it's both readable and writable. It might be associated with something uh, in the data segment, okay? So next, assume at some point of time, the user program wanna get, get access to the virtual page number one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three, okay? The, the, the fourth virtual page. But unfortunately, its present bit is zero, right? But you wanna get access to it. So what you do, what operating system does, is operating system, you know, 
read this disk out from, read this data out from disk and uh, load it into memory. And at the same time, it updates the corresponding page table entry. And as you, as you note here, th this was before the data has been loaded from, from disk. It has the address field of 60, okay? This is after it updates the present bit from zero to one. And at the same time, it updates the physical frame number field from 60 back to eight to reflect the fact that right now this is something within the memory. And right now this value eight means this is the um, under physical, uh, is stored within physical frame number eight, okay? So the next question is what if there's no memory left because memory is some precious resource. It has limited memory capacity. So let's take a look at the old example. Assume right now the memory is full, okay? But if you wanna get access to something that is not within memory, for example, this fourth virtual page, virtual page number three, but it has a present bit of zero. This is something that is not within memory, but something out on disk. So what the operating system is gonna do is it's gonna needs to first evict something out to disk to make room for the data that needs to be brought into the memory. So as a result, it picks the very first virtual page, virtual page number zero as the victim and tries to evict it out from the memory to the disk. Okay, it picked it as a victim and then flip over here, note here, there will be two fields not, that needs to be updated. So uh, the very first field not, that needs to be updated is the present bit. You need to update it from one to zero and then update this physical, the address field to, 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 to change it to its disk address, okay? So this is after the eviction has happened, okay? You, you present, you flip the present bit from one to zero, and then correspondingly update the, the address field to reflect this, uh, its new disk location, which is 64, right? Some random number over here. And then what operating system needs to do next is to bring in the data of interest from disk to memory, which is the fourth uh, virtual page, which is virtual page number three, okay? Bring it in, so oh, so this whole process, to bring in the data um, is called, so first of all, to, to evict something out from memory to disk, this process is called swapping out or paging out, okay? And bring in something from disk to memory is called paging in or swapping in. So in this case, we wanna bring in the, the fourth virtual page, so, we need to update the address field from you know, 60, which was previous value to five, to indicate the fact that right now, this is something that is stored within physical frame number five. And at the same time, flick the present bit from zero to one. So this, again, this process is called swapping in or paging in.